Hello everyone. It is now time to compute where a function is concave up or concave down, or if the function has any inflection point. So let's start with a remark. This is really my style. You know, like try to see what's going on and try to logically deduce um, algebraic steps to get there. So our two, sorry, our two starting example, the, the infamous f and g function, the first one being concave up and the other one being concave down. We might sometimes use the terminology concave upward or downward. So we know the first function f is concave up. We know that the second function is concave down. What about the sign of the slope of the tangent line? Because concavity is linked to those tangent lines. We say that concave up if those functions are curved above those tangent line and it's curved downward if they're below them. Are the sign of those slopes playing a role in concavity? Well, if we were like to assign numbers to these slopes, like for example, for f, the first one, it looks like it could be a line where the slope is around 0 0.5. The second one would be like maybe around 1. And the last one here would be maybe around 2. I'm just running the slopes here. And meanwhile, for g, the first slope would be, it would be kind of the opposite, around 2, around 1, and around 0 0.5. So if you're asking yourself, like, what's, what are the signs of those slopes? Well, they're both positive, right? So the slope of the tangent line R, positive, and the slope of the tangent line of G. So for F, R positive, and for G, R also positive. So if you look at the, the sign of the first derivative, like those two functions are increasing. So this, the sign of those slopes are positive. It's not giving me any information. So if you're trying to use a sign table of f prime, you're not going to get concavity out of those uh, out of those sign value. But when you look at how the slopes themselves are changing, when you look at at the first function, the slopes they go from 0.5 to 1 to 2. These numbers are increasing. So they're all positive, but they're increasing. But meanwhile, on g, the slopes they go from 2 to 1 to 0 0.5 they are decreasing. So, and this is the difference between these two. Yes, all the slopes are strictly positive, but on the first function, these slopes are increasing. So for the first function, which is concave up, you can see that the slopes of the tangent line are increasing. So they are going up, they are increasing um, for the first example. And when, how do you check if something is increasing? Well, you can actually, we know that this is going to happen if the derivative of f prime, so remember f prime is, is the function that computes slope. So we want to say that this function is increasing. So we know how to now compute where a function is increasing is by computing the derivative of the derivative or the second derivative. So if the second derivative is positive, so if the derivative of the first derivative is positive, it means that f prime is increasing which is linked to concave up. And then when you do the same sort of analysis for the second function, so we see that the slopes for g are decreasing. I'm just going to do this with an arrow. And this will happen when the derivative function is decreasing. So when the derivative of the derivative, or g prime prime, the second derivative is going to be negative. So if the second derivative is negative, then g prime is a decreasing function. And when g prime is a decreasing function, then g is a concave down function. And that's the true power here by using the sign of the second derivative and the same sort of logic that we use between increasing and decreasing, you're going to get the notion of concavity. And actually we're going to use this as a definition. So the next definition, what is concavity for us? If you have a function f at x equal a, um, and we have a point in the domain. If the second derivative is strictly positive, it's concave up. If it's strictly negative, it's concave down. Uh, if it's zero or undefined, uh, and we have a change of sign for the second at the for, you know on the second derivative, then we're going to say that this point is an inflection point for the function. So all of this can be nicely summarize into the following remark. So for a function f, the sign table of f prime prime, the second derivative, gives the intervals where f is concave up, concave down, and it will find inflection points. So everything is in that sign table again. So again here, I cannot be more excited to use another sign table to do something. Sign table of f prime for increasing, decreasing, local min, local max, 
sine table of f prime prime for concavity, concave up, concave down, and inflection point. So let's just do some example and let's compute the concavity of some functions. We're going to use the same examples that we had in the previous section. All right, so let's do some examples for the functions below. Let's construct the sine table of the second derivative to find where the functions are concave up, concave down, and let's find any inflection points. Um, so same functions as the previous section. My first one, f, is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. Uh, you can double check that the first derivative is again 3x squared minus 6x. And then if you compute the second derivative, you're going to get 6x minus 6. And here, if you're really into it, you can factor by 6. So when you're looking for when you're looking for um, um, the sine table of that function, the first thing is that you do is you find roots. So um, or where it's undefined, but of course it's defined everywhere. So there's only one x value that makes this equation equal to zero. It's when x minus one is equal to zero, and that will happen when x is equal to one. So there's only one critical point um, for f prime, where f prime prime is equal to zero, and that's when x is equal to one. So if you construct the sine table for the second derivative, so we have one column for one, because the second derivative is zero, and you want to know what's up before, one after. And uh, so just by taking some x values, for example, at zero, zero minus one, that's negative. And then if you pick a number bigger than one, let's say two, two minus one, that's positive. So now the visual representation. So now we're not dealing with arrows anymore. We're dealing with concavity. So I'm going to use um, like a concave up symbol when we have an interval where f prime prime is positive, and I'm going to use a cup that is a bowl that is reversed below when f prime prime is negative. So here I know my function because for the first interval from minus infinity to one, it's negative. My function is going to be concave down. And then from one to uh, infinity because of the plus, we know it's going to be concave up. And because we have a change of sign, we know that one is an inflection point. So the sign table of the second derivative is really, really rich. You can compute now where a function is concave up or concave down, and you can compute where um, the function has inflection points just by constructing slash computing the sign table of the second derivative. All right, same thing with the next question. So for x e to the minus x, we had previously that the first derivative was e to the power of minus x times one minus x. If you use the product rule again, you're going to get the derivative of the first one, which is minus e to the minus x times the second one, plus the first one times the derivative of the second one, which is minus one. And here, if you factor carefully by e to the minus x, which is very typical in these questions, dealing with exponential terms, you will leave behind minus one times one minus x minus one, and you can simplify this to x minus two. So when you're looking for roots for critical points of f prime, using the same trick here, exponential terms are not going to give you zeros. So the only way this second derivative is going to be equal to zero is if x minus two is equal to zero, and that will only happen when x is equal to two. So only one critical point for f prime, and that happens when f prime 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 is equal to zero, and that happens when x is equal to two. So only one column here for numerical column for the um, sign table of f prime prime, and then you wonder what's up before and what's up after. So on the interval from minus infinity to two, and then from two to infinity, the reason why two is there is because the second derivative is zero. So if you pick a number, before two, like zero, you can double check that it's negative again. If you pick a number bigger than two, let's say three, you can double check that this is positive. So your function is initially concave down between minus infinity to two, and then it's concave up from two to infinity because we have a change of sign. We have an inflection point at x equal two. So that's it. That's all for that section. So for concavity, if you have a function that is defined algebraically, you compute its second derivative, you construct the sign table of the second derivative, 
any column for intervals where the sine of the second derivative is positive, you have intervals where the function is concave up, and for any um, intervals where the sine is negative, your function is concave down, the sine of f prime prime always, and then if you have a change of sign around a numerical column, you have an inflection point for that function. All right, for section 6.2, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye,